Hey everybody, it's Amanda from the Little Bluebird Gallery and I'm just going to play with some of my supplies here in my studio tonight and I wanted to see who is up and who is um, interested in helping me play with some paint. So I'm going to, let me see if I comment here what will happen. Hopefully I'll be able to see you guys. There you are. Hi, Julie and Tammy. Okay, so I have no idea what I'm going to do. And right now over on Instagram, I'm doing, I started a challenge for myself, which is, um, you can join in and take part in it if you want to, but it's mostly for myself to try to help me to get outside of my, my normal everyday painting type things, which would be something like this. So this is my normal palette knife painting, and uh, I've decided I need to try some new things, and I'm probably not going to do that unless I challenge myself. So um, I also challenged my creative community to do the same thing, to just get out some supplies, whatever you have, no matter what it is, and just allow yourself to play. So that's what I'm planning on doing. And I can't decide if I want to try to do something on my sketchbook or do something on one of these little tags that I'm probably going to turn into Christmas ornaments and use at some point. Let's see who's here. Hi, Shanna and Courtney. Hi, Linda. Okay. Um... Tammy said she's been wanting to do the Instagram challenge, but she's got grandkids for the week. I understand. So I, what I've been doing is I'll show you real quick what my, let's see, what have my paintings been so far? For day one, what did I do for day one? I did a pumpkin. Pretty sure that was what I did that first day. But finding the right book is possibly going to be a challenge in and of itself. <laughs> I don't remember. There it is. Okay, this was my day one painting. Um, day two, what did I do on day two? Maybe that's the day that I did these, I did these little ornaments and I'm usually, I mean, this is what I'm used to doing. This is my usual thing here. And then I also did this abstract painting here. I think that might have been day three. And I didn't start on October the 1st. So I'm a day behind in number, but I was like, I don't really care. I'm just going to do it anyway. Because I started on the second and not the first. But this was another one. This is something that I've been wanting to try to do, but I haven't just allowed myself to just take the time to try it. But this abstract was a lot of fun. So I was thinking about trying something else similar to this tonight, um, maybe. Um, oh, and then I had a red rose that I, let me find it. I think it's over here in this book. I'm switching. I've got like three different books that I've been using. And I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Okay, that was the rose right there. So I think... I'm feeling abstractish. So let's see, see what I can come up with with that. Um, Tammy's asking me where I found the ornaments. These are actually little tags that came from Michael's. Let me find my package. I got these, I got the white ones and I got these that look like barn wood. And they're made for like using on a table setting or something like that but they're just called DIY table setting tags. But um, they work really well for ornaments. So that's probably, I've got several of them. That's probably what I'm gonna end up doing is turning those into some kind of cute little Christmas ornament type things. And I've already got four done, what I do with them. I've got four that I have done. I have no idea where I put them. And I just did these 
They're supposed to be pink hydrangeas, but they are a little reddish and they have the green, so they look really Christmassy. I think they'll be pretty on a tree. Um, and I could do I could do all kinds of things with these. So that's another thing. Maybe I'll do another video and let you guys help me decide on some Christmas ornament ideas. But um, I know this is not my normal, my normal thing doing this abstract type work, but it's a lot of fun to try things that are not your normal thing. So, hi Judy and Helen, hi Leah, hi Annalise. Yeah, I'm painting on Sunday night. Um, I'm just gonna go for it and just play and try some things and see what happens. So just like the other, what's wrong with this thing? Just like the other abstract one that I did that I just showed you, I'm going to just add some stuff to this paper and see what happens. I didn't close the lid on my gel medium. All right. This is pieces of an old dress pattern. So I'm going to start with that. And I'm also going to try to use colors that I don't use a lot. I'm going to try to go for some more neutral, earthy colors in this one. That's what I have in mind anyway. These pieces already have that black line on them, and they're this neutral brown color, so that's going to work pretty well together. Cat hair. <laughs> Cats have been up here on my table, it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to start with just that. My paper's going to wrinkle just a little bit because I... I'm not using the thickest paper that I should, but I'm just practicing, so that's fine. Hi, Doreen. Hi, Melissa and Lori and Kathleen. So, like I said, I'm trying something a little bit different here. I'm going to be doing let's use some earthy tones. So this is just a cream color. I really like this brown. Can't get it open. I'm not too crazy about these new lids that they've got on this Liquitex paint though because it's it gets clogged up so easily. Because I'm not good at keeping things clean. But that's okay. All right. I need to let that dry for just a minute. So I know I'm going to use this brown. I'm going to use this cream color. Going to need a pop of something. I'm going to go with turquoise teal with that and maybe some gold got this, this iridescent gold so for those of you who weren't here in the beginning I was showing everybody this abstract thingy that I have here <laughs> that I painted last week actually when I showed it to my husband I showed him a picture of it and I said, look what I painted today. And he said, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. I painted that. And it's like, that looks totally different from anything I've ever seen you paint. 
And I was like, I know, that's the point. That's what I'm trying to do some new things. So, um, and I'm trying to add line and curve and color and pattern and really, really mix things up and make it unique. So that's what I'm going for. I think I want to try to do some kind of animal print in a pattern on this one. So I know I used to have some animal print tissue paper here somewhere, but I can't find it. And so I'm going to, I mean, I wasn't going to use that on there anyway. Y'all are just going to watch me dig through all my stuff and try to <laughs> find things that I need. Um, but I thought if I could look at the pattern, it might help me to, to draw it myself. But I may have to just wing it because I don't see that anywhere. And if it's down here, I'll never find it because that's my big stash of paper that's all crazy. So, we are going to work on this one. Hey, Mama. Now this one's clogged. I'm terrible with paint, y'all. Keeping it cleaned up. But still usable. It's just the lid's clogged. Alright, so we're just going to see what happens. I need some white, too. And I really like the way I had this circular type thing going on here. So I may do something, another one that's similar to this, that's just a different color scheme. So we've already got this going kind of in a circular type motion here. So let's just see what happens. These could be, these could be matted and framed if they turn out good enough, then I might do that and just offer them in a mat that you can frame. Let's see. A lot of people really don't appreciate abstract art or think, you know, when you stand and stare at something that's really abstract. I know I've been guilty of this too, looking at it and thinking, I could do that. I mean, that's just a blob of paint on on a canvas. But it actually takes a lot of thought and placement and you have to make sure that your colors are in the right place and um, in order to do it well, there's more to it than you might, than you might think. Okay, so I'm going to do something like that. And it needs to curve up here a little bit more too somewhere. So we'll do let's do that. Okay. So right here is gonna be the main turquoise area that's really a deeper color. But I don't want it to be too structured. I want it to be kind of messy. Okay, now let's just try some, um, I'm going to practice on a piece of paper and I'm going to try to see if I can do like an animal print because usually, if I'm thinking right, usually it's like a little 
blob of Am I doing this right? Or is it black? Is it a black blob with that around it? You guys help me out with the animal print because I don't remember. I may have to look it up. <laughs> I really wish I could find that tissue paper. Hang on a second. Because it has to be over here. Somewhere. I don't want to do it wrong. And like I said, y'all are watching me play, so this is just part of it. Now, what did I do with it? Some gold polka dots. It has to be down here in all this. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yes. I was right to begin with that it is a little brown blob. <laughs> and then put the black around it and just randomness. Okay, so. I'm going to try to paint some of that and see what happens. I don't think I want to use these oil pastels on this one yet. So I'm just going to try, try to just freehand some animal print. We'll see what happens. And I don't want it to be really big. So I'm going to use a pretty small brush. And let's see, I'm going to make some, like a pretty brown color. And let's put it, this is all still wet, so, and it's starting to wrinkle. But that's okay, because after I'm done, if I want to, if I want to keep it, um, I can just flatten it out, just put something heavy on top of it and flatten it out. Uh, let's see. Leah said, if it's wrong, it would be okay. You're right, because it's just paint, and this is just practice. And, Courtney, this is the kind of animal print, I guess, I don't know what that is. Cheetah? Is that leopard? I don't know. <laughs> I should have specified what animal, I guess. Okay. So... Let's do some little brown blobs over here. Sounds so technical, I know, little brown blobs. I'm so glad animal print is back in style because I really like the whole leopard print stuff. I wish I'd kept some of my shirts that I got rid of, you know, from the 90s <laughs> when it was popular back then. All right, let's see how much how much of this do I want to do? I want it to overlap. Come down here. Some too, maybe over here. If it turns out really cute, then I may start putting leopard print on everything. Hi, Rhonda. I'm doing another abstract. So right now, I'm trying to to make some leopard print over here on this side, and. I'm going to use a lot of earthy tones in this. The blue is going to be my bright, happy color in this one. And then we're going to have, I don't really know what I'm going to have. I'm just playing with paint. So, abstracts have always intimidated me. 
and I don't really know a lot about structuring an abstract properly. I've been watching um, some other artists that are really good at it and picking up a few things here and there, but I was saying it's it's not as easy as it looks when you see um, like an abstract, you know, artist that's famous and people will say things like, oh, I could do that. Well, it's not quite as easy as you think. Okay, so now I've got to do these little black areas. I'm looking at my... This may turn out to be horrible, and it may not look like leopard print at all, but we'll see. Uh, Tammy says my my brown looks really dark. Well, it's it's probably my light because it's not as it's not as dark as it looks. Let me let me move this down a little bit and see. That helps you see what I'm doing a little better. You may not be able to see my palette, but maybe that'll give you a better view. Just looking like animal print at all. Leopard print. Try not to think about what I'm doing too much, but it's hard. <laughs> it's hard not to. I need to turn my light up a little bit. That helps too. I put a different filter on my, my lamp, so it wouldn't be quite so harsh, but at night in here, when there's no light coming through the window at all, it makes it really dark. I'm not sure that anyone who doesn't know what this is would think that that is leopard print, but hey, it's a cool pattern. I think I've got too much space in between some of them, so it needs to, the black and the brown need to touch each other a little better than that. So how many of y'all have been following and are trying this new challenge with me over on Instagram? Did you know about it? Have you heard about it? I know Julie is. Um, we're all you, you don't have to have any kind of special instructions all you have to do is paint something every day and number it like this is number one this is number two this is number three and just hashtag bluebird art challenge And then you can search for that hashtag over on Instagram and see everybody's paintings for the day, which is really cool. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to lighten up some spots. I'm almost out of water. Isn't that terrible that I let my water, 
I've let my water evaporate in here over the weekend. My brush water. Okay. Let's make this lighter in some spots. Uh, Tony said, is it the Inktober one? No, it's not. I just made this up myself. So I don't use, um, I don't use ink. I don't draw. And so this was something I totally decided to do just for me. But I invited everybody to join me if you want to. And I really challenged my creative community members. this month this is this is one of the things that we are working on is our creative courage okay I lightened it up some that one's a little bit too light okay let's put some hmm need to put something over here something dark so I'm gonna mix up some just make a pretty neutral brown and I want to make some lines with that so let's find my Try using this and see what happens. That looks pretty cool. Mm. I need something else right there, but I don't think I want to do lines right there. Let's do one. One little set right here, maybe. Maybe let's do one. That. And I know this is a weird tool to be using, but I'm going to use a fork. And I'm going to make some black dots. I may not want them to be quite so uniform, so let's do this. That looks pretty cool. Um, let's do this.
Okay. Thinking about this gold. Let's see. Annalise said she's been following, but she's been working a lot and hasn't had time to do the challenge, which is fine. Um, thank you, Deborah. <laughs> My Aunt Mona said that she's going to stick to baking. Maybe you could, I mean, that's artwork in itself, because I'm not good at that. And I know it takes, takes some talent and creativity to bake and make it turn out like it's supposed to, for sure. I still think it needs a different color. I mean, another color. I'm just not sure what color. The gold's just going to be a little more like this background that I've got right here. i got to find my color wheel. So we got blue. You guys know I'm not going to do orange. I do like some red. Red and turquoise look really cool together. So I'm thinking Let's see what color this looks. Could add a little bit of that. I'm not sure I like that. Let's try this one. Mm. It's more of an orangey red, which I think would probably work better with these browns and earth tones that I've got going on here. So let's just make some, just make a few little small marks. Maybe just go in here where this white spot is. And maybe a little bit right here. Just so I've got a little bit of that in there. trying to decide if I need to put something on top of this and I think that I do but I don't want to use the oil pastel for that. Um, Courtney said what did I say the hashtag is on Instagram? It is bluebird art challenge. Uh, Tony said does it matter if you do the challenge on index cards? You can paint whatever you want to. Um, one of mine I use these little tags. So it's just more, it's just an encouragement for you to get creative, paint something every day. Um, just start using your own ideas and come up with all kinds of, of new and, and different things. Um, Courtney said, is your notebook a regular sketch pad or is it thicker paper? It's thicker paper. This one is, let me see if I can show you the front without messing it up. It's a mixed media pad. They make even thicker paper that would work even better for all of these layers. But um, this one's not expensive and, um, and works pretty well for me. Leah said to add pink. I already did some orangey red. Um, Tony said, I think I could manage it if index cards were allowed. Yeah, you can do any size you want to. It doesn't matter at all any kind of surface. All right, I'm going to try. Let me just see what happens when I try to splatter this gold. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, I may want to control it a little more. Let's put one drop there.
maybe let it run a little bit right here. So this is really, really runny. It's um, high flow or high flow. <laughs> My country accent is a high flow um, <laughs> acrylic. So it's going to really drip. And we'll just make all kinds of fun drips and you can even splatter it if you want to. But I'm going to let it just run down. You can kind of move it and tilt it and make it go wherever you want it to. And then when it gets to the point where you want it to stop, you just put it down. And if you wanted to, you can kind of clean that up a little bit. Um, let's see. Tony said you can get that pad at Walmart and it doesn't cost much. Yes. Practice on things that are not expensive because if you if you get something out like a, a canvas that you've paid $15 for and you start trying to play on that, then you are not going to allow yourself to make a mess and try things and mess it up and start over again because you're going to feel like I've got to get this right the first time. So if you play on a piece of cardboard or a sketchbook or a scrap of paper or just whatever you have, then that's going to allow you to really have fun, to really experiment and not be so tight and worried and stressed out when you try to paint something. So sketchbooks, I have tons of sketchbooks, um, and they come in different sizes, of course, like this is the same brand. This one is a 7 by 10 then this one is, let me see, a 9 by 12 then I've got a little bitty one. This one is... Um, five by eight and this is a different brand but it's still a mixed media pad and they work the same way. I got this at Hobby Lobby for two dollars so it has 40 sheets in it um, and even though it's paper it has this line right here that's perforated that you can tear it out and you can frame these I mean you don't it's good quality paper but it's not really expensive and Karen asked, would a watercolor pad work? Yes, it will. Laura said, what made you try abstract? I've just always wanted to try it. It always looks cool to me. I mean, first of all, basically, I'm doing abstract laurels already. Um, my mixed media flowers are pretty abstract. Um, but this is just more of it's abstract in that it doesn't really represent a real thing. I mean, you could pretend that it's a, a planet or a flower or whatever, but um, this is just something that I've always wanted to try, but haven't really allowed myself the privilege to do it. I don't know why, but um, I'm still looking at this, and down here, it needs something dark right here, so I think I'm going to add just some more, some more black paint. Just maybe a little swipe of it. And let's see. Like that. But when I just started on this earlier, what, 40 minutes ago, I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew I wanted to try something that was abstract that was kind of similar to what I did the other day with different colors and I wanted to try to make this little animal print thing that I got going on here 
So this is what we ended up with. Um, I'm not sure I like that, but okay. <laughs> Deborah's asking, what am I doing? Is this supposed to look like something? It's just supposed to be fun. This is abstract. These are patterns and drips. And I've got some collage work. I've got some animal leopard print going on right here. I just wanted to play and see what kinds of things I could do. And I know that a lot of people who normally like my things that are a little more realistic probably won't like this but that's okay you don't have to I'm totally fine with that okay let's see I'm gonna pull down some blue right there and then I think I may be may be ready to stop with this one um see Karen said her daughter was an artist, and when she passed, she found all sorts of pads and wanted to try her hand at it. I think that would be awesome. I'm sure you can use you can use watercolor pads. That's really thick paper, and it's gonna gonna work really well for you. Let's see. Thanks, Jennifer. Laura said so. You kind of had something in mind. Yet yeah, not really, so it makes sense now. The flowers are abstract, yet flowers, and this can be anything you want it to be. Exactly. Uh, Tony said, leopard print always looks so easy to do, but when I try it, <laughs> it is. It's not as easy as you would think. I mean, when you look at something like that, you would think that's just little blobs of brown and black. It shouldn't be that hard to do. But then when you actually start trying to do it, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. Um... Uh, Jennifer said, kind of looks mid-century to me. Yeah, it kind of does, now that you say that. Tammy says, I've dealt... Hmm, Tammy, that didn't make sense. <laughs> really begun, okay. Really begun loving abstracts, too. It's really about painting through your emotions and your feelings. And that is the fun of it, because... It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to look like anything that you've seen before. You can get very creative with this. You can use the colors that you like, you can use the patterns that you like, you can use softness, you can use, you know, heavy texture, you can do all kinds of things with abstracts. Um but yeah, this is gonna be my day five. Is it day five? Is that right? Yeah. This will be my day five. Uh, painting over my Instagram challenge, hashtag Bluebird Art Challenge. And you guys can join in if you want to. There are no rules. You just have to paint something every day and post it on Instagram. And then use that hashtag. So hopefully it will get you started and get you going too. Um, help you be a little more creative. And come up with some ideas that you might not normally come up with. I keep looking at it, and when I look at it on my screen, and I look at it here, it, they look different. So, to balance out these dots, I'm going to put some more of these little black dots down here, and then maybe I will be satisfied and can stop.
It does have a little bit of a modern, mid-century modern look to it. So this would be something that would be pretty groovy back in the day. And you guys know all that that whole style and um especially with furniture right now is really popular. But anyway, this would this could look really cool if it was matted and framed. Let me grab a mat and show you. If I can find one that'll this may not be quite big enough, but it'll be at least big enough for you to see what I mean. Even if you paint on paper. You can still take a mat and do something like this. This is not, this is a little bit snug, but wouldn't that look really cool in like a black frame or gold frame? It could look really nice. So don't, um, don't underestimate the power of play and paper and just getting out all your supplies and trying something new because you never know what you might come up with. Now I see another thing I want to change. You guys are going to be like, I'm ready for her to leave. Um, not really change, but I went in and put some of these light spots in these leopard print dots and I don't like it so much. So I'm just going to Make them a little bit darker, and then I'm going to call it done. I got to put my initials on there somewhere. But this is my new experimenting with abstracts sample here. Yeah, Karen, it looks really far out. <laughs> uh, that right there bothers me too. I'm gonna make that cleaner. I do mostly impressionistic paintings. So I wouldn't really say that when I said my flowers are abstract, they are abstract in that they don't look like realism in any way. <clears throat> But it does have the impression that it is a flower. So that looks cleaner. So I don't really do abstract, I wouldn't say. Because well, just for example, when you're looking at this, you can tell that it's a flower. It's not, um, when some people do abstract florals, it's just more like you have to look at it and, and them have to, they would have to tell you that that's what it is. But with this, it's more like an impressionistic look rather than an abstract look. So doing these kinds of things here are very different from anything that I've done before so but it's a lot of fun and that's why I'm doing it so this is my day five I'm gonna snap a quick picture while I got you guys here with me and that is going to go on my Instagram account with the hashtag bluebird art challenge so thank you all for watching and being here and chatting with me and I hope that you'll be able to join the challenge if you want to. There are no strings attached. You don't have to join anything. I'm just trying to get everybody to try new things. And um, if you're in my creative community now, you need to do it because we're working on our creative courage this week and this, well, this whole month really. And this is something that will help to boost that creativity. It's gonna help to boost your Courage also because you're going to be practicing a whole lot. If you, paint, if you paint something every day, that is a lot of practice, and that's going to help you in, um, in so many ways. So if you're my creative community, I want you to be doing this with me and posting it on Instagram with that hashtag.
So I'll see you all next time. Bye.